and in Pittsburgh. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. We are at the confluence of the Ohio, Allegheny, and Monongahela Rivers at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, PA. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Cleveland Browns. Here we go from Heinz Field as Chris Boswell tees it up and boots it away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Here's the Cleveland offense, and here's Baker Mayfield, former Heisman Trophy winner, ready to go at quarterback. It's okay if I give him a few props right here. Do you mind? I think he's earned it. Go ahead. Okay, how about a guy who was a two-time walk-on, who later became a two-time Big 12 Player of the Year, has the most touchdown passes in Big 12 history with 129, a Heisman Trophy into his credit and took his team to the college football playoff semifinal twice while at Oklahoma. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. And he's upended at the 33 following a good pickup of eight. He's an early task. Two plays in. This is third and two. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. And he rifles it complete. Caught by Landry. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. First down, Cleveland. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. The last run got six, now second and four. Second and four. They go play action. Mayfield. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. That play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. the 33 on third down working out of the gun Mayfield and that is incomplete from a defensive perspective they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football there was pressure on the quarterback they were getting after him and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion on fourth down here's Jamie Gillen on to punt And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. This one will sail out of bounds. It'll depend on the spot here. And the side judge says that went out at the seven-yard line. 
And here comes Ben Roethlisberger out onto the field ready to lead this Steeler offense. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball. Run it inside. Everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. First carry of the game for Jalen Samuels. Taking it right down Broadway. The 40, the 30, 10, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. On Jalen Samuels, 93 yards. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. So their backs were against the wall, deep back in their own territory. And they run it all the way down into the end zone. That takes a lot of coordination for an offensive team, doesn't it? Because, let's face it, it's really not a surprise that they're going to run the ball in that situation. Backed up that close to their own end zone, they usually do call running plays, trying to be safe. Instead, it turns into an electrical run of both for your team, and off he goes to the races. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that makes the score 7-0. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Now Donovan Peoples-Jones. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. On the return, the Browns take over first and 10. At their own Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs... They're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. They're looking for Higgins, but it is intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. And he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown, and pick it off, just as we saw there. To the right side to Eric Ebron. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. At the 40-yard line. It's a gain of five. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron with it, over the middle. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. First and 10 at the 34-yard line. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Ebron caught left side. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Brings the final 30 seconds in this first quarter, and it's been a quarter dominated by the guys with the football. They'll run for the first time with James Conner. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Steelers seven, Browns nothing. Try and run for it with Connor. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. This defense is really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. 
So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. Boswell's kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. Makes the score Steelers 10, Browns nothing. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know, there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no wind, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. He had to force the field goal. Baker Mayfield leads the offense out for their next possession. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb, and he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll move the chains. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Stephon Tuan able to shake free and get home for the sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. From the shotgun, it's Mayfield. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. At their own 28 yard Pittsburgh's line. offense now heading back out onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. Johnson on its poke three. Football's out. And this is picked up by the Browns. These defenses have become so opportunistic, and no matter what you're playing, in this case, wide receiver, you got to be careful. You certainly do, because there is a phrase in today's football that we use all the time, completing the process of the catch. Well, it's after you do that where the trouble begins, right? Meaning you've tucked it away, you're trying to get downfield, but someone's always coming up trying to rake it the ball and knock it free. And he's got his man on the crossing route. That's Landry. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Took nearly the entire first half, but a first red zone opportunity for him here. First and 10 right at the 20. Chubb with a first down carry as he'll get about three out of it. They get second and seven coming up. He's taken down at the 17-yard line. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0 our score. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis. And he's going to go down. He's sacked back in the 24. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. You normally don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. That is caught at the seven and they work this near the five he'll be stopped at the six they're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal that's a play that'll likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game but plays like this are critical to keep drives going if points result we'll call this play significant they'll go screen here to hunt and he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three Complete. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Second and goal. From the gun, Mayfield. And this is caught for a Browns touchdown by Landry. Complete to 
Jarvis. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Browns are back within a score. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yep. of a half, yeah. heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football. Full half to be played. Perky with the extra point. And that'll cut it to three at 10 7. Cody Perky set to kick off. Now, after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. And this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That could be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. And he comes back with one complete. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not, and they'll try to convert on third and inches. Ebron's got it, and he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. It's a gain of 20 as we wind down near 20 seconds left in the quarter. Well, we know he has pretty good hands on display there. In fact, he only needed one of them. Yeah, and nowadays, all these receivers work on this, right? They do the one-handed catches off the machine in practice. They do it with their quarterbacks. They do it contested, uncontested. They make it part of their repertoire. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Ben to throw again. Throwing for his running back, and he's got it complete. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This will be a 37-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. Brown seven. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We just watched a very good first half out of the veteran QB, Ben Roethlisberger. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Cody Parkey sets the kickoff. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead, and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. And that's fielded on the back line of the end zone, and he will not bring it out. It's a touchback. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? 
because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offenses... And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Miles Garrett, it'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Well, partner, we know they came out of the locker room down on the scoreboard, but I will guarantee you, the defensive side of the ball got super emotional. They can come out and play with aggressiveness, with fury, because they don't have to be quite as precise, and it paid off for them on that play, didn't it? Sure did. Excellent play, really setting the tone for this third quarter. After the sack on first down, Roethlisberger. That went into the hands of his tailback, Samuels. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Now Roethlisberger to throw. Setting up the screen, this is Samuels. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up fourth down. Brandon, how about that reaction there from a defensive end? able to recognize the screen pass trying to happen, broke off his pass rush, and then get back to tackle the running back. That's a very athletic and intelligent play. Reminds me of you working out and seeing that the treadmill's open and getting there before anyone else. See, I know you're just patronizing me right now. Everybody knows at home that that is nothing but a shot at me, and I'll take it, absorb it, and we'll move on. Barry on to punt as he gets this one away. This is brought in at the 21. And now running right through it. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And the Browns will take over first and 10. As the offense comes out, we put our Madden spotlight on Baker Mayfield. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it struggled. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground, but that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three. At the they go with Chubb on second down. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. No gain on the play. Brings up third down. Now Mayfield. This one complete into the hands of Higgins. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Last play they got stuffed at the line. Different story here over 20 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Here's second and nine. Just a yard on that last run. throw is going to be incomplete. So many times we talk about covers, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And he's unable to haul it in, so it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field, and that brings up four. The kick by Parkey is good, and that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. Browns 10. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their history. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Three, 
From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Two yards, good enough for a first. Second and one, if people want to run the football, this is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. Six-yard line. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Brandon, right, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Brings up second and seven. Here's Samuels again. A good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. He was brought down by Carl Joseph. Brings up third down. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. James Johnson. That's good for a Pittsburgh Steeler. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 42-yard line. Roethlisberger going to get that to Ebron. He'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Roethlisberger. Completion here to Claypool. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Chase Claypool. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the Browns' 15-yard line. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. The counter, it's coming. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means it might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. Roethlisberger. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger with a touchdown pass to Juju Smith-Schuster. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. I think it's easy to say mission accomplished on that drive. The goal was to increase the lead. They did exactly that. guys will take a 10-point lead. A 10-play drive that time. And it ends with a Pittsburgh touchdown. Browns 10. Chris Oswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Takes this about five yards deep. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. They're on 25-yard line. The Browns set and ready to go on offense. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now. First and 10 at their own 25-yard line. 
From the gun, he'll set up to throw. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 27 on the play. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Gets this to Kareem Hunt, his running back. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. Another first down there as this one goes for 25. And the Browns first down. Mayfield on first down. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 11 more on that one, and another first down. First down. Going to the air again with Mayfield. This is caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Baker Mayfield with a touchdown pass to Austin Hooper. And the Browns have cut it back within a score. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. It's up and good, and the lead's now down to three at 20 to 17. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. Cody Parkey set to kick off. Now after the score, it's Parkey on to kick it away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just take a seat and the driver to get it to 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all of their timeouts. So we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, and then, by the way, also the two-minute warning in play, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Right back to Connor here on first. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. The tackle by five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. with the counter and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next here's Jordan Berry now as he'll kick it away for the second time this is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines the Browns take over first and ten at their own 25-yard line. Now Mayfield and the Browns. Down 20 to 17. 65 seconds remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Here's the 
Baker's Mayfield. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken. Down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. That just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To the right side, and he's got Landry complete. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. Now Mayfield on fourth down. And it's complete. Hooper. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. A gain of 31 yards. First down. Brown. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Mayfield to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Hodge. Mayfield's pass. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. A seven-yard pickup. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Four seconds to go. This would send us to overtime. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Four seconds to go. This would send us to overtime. And this is no good. Target, but just a touch short, and that's how this one comes to an end. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises, really both sides did, but they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. Charles Davis and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.